So that's where things can get a bit complicated. Um, anyways, to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for event in pygame. Oops, what am I doing with my typing here? Pygame dot event dot get like so, and then we're just going to say if event dot type equals equals pygame dot quit like this and this is the first one we always want to code in because we want to make sure that if they click that little red arrow um, it actually works and we can quit so we're going to do pygame dot quit like that and then we're just going to say if uh, actually we don't even need another if because the way i'm going to do this is uh this other way you might have seen in pygame before to move things around you say like if uh, event dot type equals key down and then you just check which key was pressed and move to the left this is a similar thing but it works smoother um i've used both of them a lot and this is the one i prefer so i'm just going to use this so pygame dot key dot get underscore press so what this is going to do is it's going to get a list actually i think it's like a dictionary or something like that that has all the key values and then if they were pressed or not so that way, if you press more than one key at once when you're looping through, um, it'll adjust to that. Whereas the other one, you can only click one at a time and you couldn't move like per se diagonally if you were moving like a character on the screen. It doesn't matter too much for this, but this is the way I like to do it. So now I'm going to say for key in keys, because remember, this is going to give us all of the keys and then like a one or zero value if they were clicked or not. Um, so we need to loop through all of them and check. We're going to say if keys and then pygame.key or oops dot k underscore left thought it was key there and then we're going to say if keys high game dot k underscore right like that and we can continue down here with up and down and then we'll get into exactly what is going to happen when we click uh, these keys so last one here all right and there we go okay so now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to change the direction according to what key we click. So if we're going left, that means that our X has to be negative because the way again coordinates work in Pygame is in the top left hand corner of your screen is zero, zero. Um, so if we want to be moving left, we should be making our X negative to move um, more towards zero, right? If we want to move right, then we make our X positive, which would be one in this case, because we're just going to move one cube at a time uh, to go further to the right. Same thing with the Y. Uh, it's kind of weird in Pygame how the Y works because the more Y you add, the further down you go. Um, so we'll do that in a second. So for x, we're going to say self.dern x equals negative 1, again, because we're moving left. And we're going to set our dern y equal to 0. And this is because, again, we don't want to be moving in two directions at once and be going uh, diagonally. Now, this is what I was talking about, is we need to remember where we actually turned. Because if you just have one cube moving around, that's fine. But when you have multiple cubes, we need to be able to turn left. Right? We need to remember where we turned so that the tail of our cube can turn at that point. So that's why we have that self.turns list up here, or just this turns, um, I want to say dictionary or set, whatever. So we're going to add to that. We're going to self.turns, and we're going to give it a new key. And I'll go through how this works in a second. Self.pause here is equal to, and then we're going to give just a list of self.turn x and self.turn y. Okay, so you might be kind of confused on what's going on here. So I've created a new dictionary up here. That's what I'm going to call it officially. You could think of it as a set as well. Um, and pretty much we're going to add a key, which is the current position of the head of our snake. Um, and then it's going to be set equal to what direction we turned. So we're saying we have a new turn at this position and our character or our snake moved left. So it's going to say we have self.dern y, which is right here as negative one self dot or surf dot turn x sorry and then turn y is equal to zero so we know what uh, way we actually turned and i hope that makes sense that's uh yeah that's how we're going to do that now i'm just going to copy and paste these and then change these values so when we're going right this is going to be one oops same thing here so we'll put that in this is going to be zero and turn y we're going up is going to be negative one now when we're going down we need to change this to one and this to zero and I'm just going to get rid of that and there we go okay so that is uh, pretty much how we go about doing this um, and I can also just put elifs here as well because we don't want to be able to move in more than one direction so we're going to prioritize the left arrow key um, if they're not clicking the left arrow key then we'll check if they're doing the right otherwise up otherwise down because we don't want them to be able to click more than one key at once 
Okay, so next we need to actually move our cube. And this is where it gets a little bit more tricky um, in terms of looking where our cube is. And if it's at that turn, then we're going to turn it. So I'm just going to start coding, and then I'm kind of going to go through exactly what I do. So for I, C, and enumerate. Oops. And I spelled that wrong, didn't I? Like that. Uh, and then we're just going to say self.body because we're going to look through the list of uh, positions that we have in on the snake. And we're going to say p equals c.position. And I'm just going to copy this. Um, by the way, that's what this little arrow does here. It just makes a copy so that we're not changing the position of our snake um, when we do things. It's just, uh, just follow along with it. It's not super important. Okay, so we're going to say if p is in self.turns like this. Because remember, what we did is we added the position of our head to turns. So now we're going to say, well, if this position is in the turns, then we're going to move or we're going to turn, right? So let's say here, so we're going to say turn oops, equals self.turns p, like that. So now we've seen that it's in there. Uh, so now that it's in there, we can find the index of it uh, and we can grab the direction value so we know what way we're going to be moving. And now we're just going to say c.move like this and turn zero, turn one, like so. Okay, now next I'm going to say if i equals equals the length of self.body minus one, oops, then I'm simply going to do self. I don't know why that's capital self dot turns dot pop p. Okay, so I know I just did a lot of coding here, and this probably uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to you guys. So I'm going to kind of run through exactly what I just did. Um, it's it's pretty it's a little bit difficult to explain. So anyways, what we start off by doing is we're going to say we're going to get the index and we're going to get the cube um, object in our self dot body because remember our self dot body is made up of cube objects right here. Um, that have these properties, right? They're going to have a direction y, direction x, um, a start, a color, so on. And we're going to get we're going to get to coding cube in just a second. So they're ha cube objects. Now all of these cube objects have a position. So I'm saying for each um, object here, I'm going to grab their position, and I'm going to see if that position is in our turn list. And we create the turn list and add to the turn list um, when we turn, right? When we click left, center, right, so on. Um, and then we're going to say, okay, so the actual turn, so where we're actually going to be moving is equal to um, that uh, the uh, turns list at that index, right? So we grab uh, the turn direction X and direction Y, which we stored there. And now we're going to just going to say our cube dot move, which is another method that we're going to code. And we're giving it that direction X and that direction Y. So it knows what way it needs to move um, pretty well. And then I say, if i is equal to the length of self body minus one. So that means if we are on the last cube, we're going to remove that turn. So once that last cube hits that turn, we're going to remove it. Because if we were just to leave that turn in the list, then that would mean any time you hit that position on the screen, regardless of if the snake was turning there or not, um, you'd automatically uh, change directions. If you don't remove it from the list, I um, hope that makes sense. Okay, now also after this if here, we're going to say if the, um, what do you call it? If it's not in the list, so if our position is not in the list, we still need to move the snake because it's constantly moving. So what do we do to this? Well, we write an else, and I'm just going to copy this in because it's going to take a second to type because I have another file open, and I'll go through what happened, how this works. Okay. No, this looks like a lot, but pretty much what this is doing for us is we're checking whether or not we've reached the edge of the screen. So we're saying if we're moving left, and the position, so the x position of our cube is less than or equal to zero, um, then we're going to change that position so that it goes to the right side of the screen. So the way that we can do that is by saying c dot rows minus one, because again, in you start counting at zero in computers. Um, so if our rows is like 20, then the last cube would be uh, 19 in a list, right? So they c dot rows minus one, and we're going to be at the same y value. So we'll leave that there. Okay, and then we say otherwise, uh, we're going to check if we're going right, if we're moving right, and same thing if we're at the edge of the screen, move back to the left side by putting zero here. And then next one, if we're going down, uh, what we're going to be doing is again checking 
are we less than uh, rows minus one or greater than rows minus one? No, we're not. Or if we are, then let's move us back up to the top of the screen uh, by changing our Y value. And then same thing here if you're moving upwards. Now, if none of that's true, so we're not at the edge of the screen, we're not moving up, left, down to whatever I just said, uh, then we're just simply going to move our cube at the uh, direction X and the direction Y of that cube already. So if that cube is moving upwards and it's not turning and it's not going to the edge of the screen, it doesn't need to be changed, just keep moving it in whatever direction it's going. And that's why I'm simply referencing the cubes already existing direction X and direction Y. We're not changing anything, we're simply just saying, okay, let's move you forward one like that. I hope that makes sense. That was a lot. And that's probably one of the hardest things in this program is figuring out the movement of the snake. So if you guys understand that, um, then that is the hard part kind of over with. And we're going to get into this cube object. So you're going to understand what all of this means and how our rows and columns kind of work and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm just going to forget about reset and add cube for now, because we'll, we'll worry about those later. Um, but let's get into the uh, draw method because we want to see if this is actually working and put this on the screen. So simply for I, C, and numerate. Why can I not spell enumerate today? Like that. Uh, same thing, self.body, like that. We're going to say if I equals equals zero, C dot draw, and you'll see why it is in a second. True. Else C dot draw surface. Like that. Okay, so the reason I'm uh, doing this little check here rather than just drawing every object um, is because when we uh, draw the first snake object, I'm not sure if you remember my other program, it had eyes. So what I would simply want to do is make sure that when we draw that first object, we add eyes onto it just so we know where the head of the snake is. Uh, we don't get confused like what direction it's moving in. Although you shouldn't, we, I want to add the little eyes, uh, maybe just for aesthetic as well. So what this true does, optional parameter, simply says draw eyes if it's the... Uh, first one in our list like that if it's the head uh, and then in this draw method you can see I have eyes equals to false but when you make it equal to true we're going to do a special thing in here that's going to draw eyes for us okay so now that we've coded this this whole mess of stuff in the snake um, class let's just run the program quickly and see if anything's happening so currently we just have the grid we don't have any errors or anything but that's because we haven't drawn the snake object onto the screen yet so what we need to do is we just need to do simply do s dot draw it within our redraw window here. So I'm just going to type, uh, I'm going to global S here and I'll global it down there as well. I'm going to say S dot draw like that. And we need to give it a surface. So let's give it a surface and I'm just going to global S so that we can reference it there. Uh, and is there a reason we aren't being drawn to the screen? Let's just have a look quickly. S, S dot draw. Start draw. Oh, it's because yes, we are indeed drawing S, but we haven't drawn any of the cube objects yet. And it is calling the draw method on all of our cube objects, which we haven't yet created. Hopefully that makes sense, but we'll go ahead and do that now. So we have to code a little bit more before we can see everything. So let's just go ahead and get into the cube object here. And let's just say self dot start equals start, except I'm actually just going to change this to position because I believe this is what it's supposed to be. And then we're gonna say self dot turn x equals one, self dot turn y is equal to zero, and self dot color is equal to color. And the reason we have this is because we're gonna be drawing later what I want to call like a snack for the uh, for the cube to collect for the snake to collect. Um, so we want to be able to change the color with that. And uh, spelled it wrong like three times during x and during y the reason i have during x here set to one initially is because i uh i want to make sure that we start moving in a direction if i had this at zero you would have to click a key before the snake starts moving but i want right when we run the program for the snake to just start moving so i'm setting it already with a direction x and the reason these are optional again is so that when we create a new cube object we don't have to implicitly um, say direction X is one direction Y is zero because it's assumed that it's always going to be like that unless otherwise stated Okay, uh, let's have a look. What else do we need to do here? Uh, we need to now code this move function, which is actually really easy um, All I'm just gonna do is we're gonna say since we're changing the direction X and the direction Y in our snake class We need to do that in here so that it stays with the object. I'm gonna say during X equals during X and then same thing self dot Darren y equals darren y like that 
and then we'll go down here and all we're going to do is we're going to change our position so self dot position is equal to self dot pause zero which is our already existing position plus self dot during x and they're saying self dot pause one which is our already existing y value plus equals self dot during y like that and just in case I haven't mentioned it here, right, we're working with a grid system of 20 rows in this instant. So when I say something like, uh, if our self dot position is like one, three, or 10, 10, I'm saying we're in the 10th row in the 10th column. I'm not saying the X value is equal to 10 and the Y value is equal to 10 um, because it's not in the case of drawing on the screen because our screen is actually a width of 500 pixels. Um, but just where we are in the grid, which is most important to us right now, um, is equal to like that value. It's so like one, four, three, five, um, so on like that. Just, just to make that clear for anyone who might've been confused.